And finally, the last type of measures is the measures of relative standard. So those type of measures allow us to describe the relative quantitative location or position of a particular value within a data set in comparison to other values. So in simple words, those measures will allow us to compare one value to the other values within the data set. And there are three measures that we will analyze. It's percentile, quartile, and z-score. So let's have a look at each of them. Let's start with the percentile. So percentile, this is a number such that some percentage of the values fall below that number and 100 minus that percentage fall above it. And here is the formula. So XPI, this is the lower boundary of the percentile group. I, this is the percentage that we are interested in. N is the total number of observations divided by 100 minus FPI, which is the cumulative frequency before the percentile group. And PI, this is the number of observations within the percentile group. And the ratio is multiplied by IPI, which is the percentile group wise. To better understand this formula, let's have a look at some specific example. Let's revisit our example of grades in statistics. And for example, if we need to calculate the 65th percentile, this will be the formula. So first of all, we need to determine this percentile group. So we need to calculate where we will have the, uh, the value, the observation that splits the sample into 65 and 35 percent. And if you use a calculator and multiply 25 by 65 percent, you will see that uh, this is observation number 16.25. So we can say it's more or less observation number 16. And based on the cumulative frequency, we can see that observation number 16, the value number 16, is within the third group. So it's right here. Therefore, the lower boundary of our percentile group is 56. After, the, after this, we move to the fraction where 65, this is the percentage we're interested in, 25, this is the total number of observations divided by 100 minus 15, which, as, which is FBI, the cumulative frequency before the percentile group. So this is the cumulative frequency within the second group. After this, we divide by 6, which is the number of observations within the percentile group. So within the third group, which we can see 6. And after this, we multiply this ratio by 18, which is the width of the percentile group. So in our case, the width is 74 minus 56, which gives us 18. And we get that the 65th percentile is equal to 59.75. And the interpretation is the following. So 65% of grades within this data set is below 59.75 whereas 35% of grades is above 59.75. Quartile is a special case of, per of percentile, and this is a percentile that divides a data set into four categories, each category containing exactly 25% of the values. So the lower quartile, this is the first 25% of observations, the middle qu quartile, this is the median or 50th percentile, so the value that splits the sample into two equal parts. And the upper quartile, this is the value that splits the sample into 75% and 25%. And let's have a look at the formula. So to, for example, to calculate the lower quartile, we need first of all the lower boundary of the, of the lower quartile group plus n, which is the total number of observations divided by 4, minus fql, which is the cumulative frequency before the lower quartile group, divided by nql, which is the number of observations within the lower quartile group, and after this the ratio is multiplied by iql, which is the lower quartile group wise. And let's see how this formula is applied to the specific example. So here we need to compute the lower quartile, which means we need to find the value that split the sample into 25% and 75. So 
once again we need to decide which quartile is that and to do that once again we need to take our calculators and multiply 25 number of observations by 25 percent and we will get that this is observation number 6.25 so observation 6.25 or approximately 6 splits the sample into 25 and 75 percent and if you look at the cumulator frequency you will see that observation number six is within the second quartile so that means that the lower boundary that we should use is 35 so here is the 35 plus 25 over 4 25 is the total number of observations minus 5 and this value this is fql which is the cumulator frequency before the quartile group so in our case this is the cumulator frequency from the first group then everything is divided by 10 which is the number of observations within the quartile group so here it is number of students and then we multiply by 20 uh, which is the width of the uh, of the quartile group so 55 minus 35 is 20 and we get that the grade is 37.5 so the interpretation is the following 25 percent of grades within this data set is below the value of 35.5 whereas 75 percent of grades is above the value of 37.5 and finally a z-score we can estimate a z-score for each value in the data set and the formula is quite simple we take each individual value and we subtract the mean and divide this difference by standard deviation so as you can see based on this formula z-score shows the distance between some value x and the mean expressed in standard deviations and this score is a very useful statistic because it allows us to compare the values which cannot be compared for example in real life um, for example you cannot compare a variable that is measured in dollars and uh, a variable that is measured in euros or you cannot compare a variable that is measured in kilos to the variable that is measured in measured in meters but using the z-score you can transform these variables in such a way that they are no longer measured in dollars euros or kilos but now all of them are measured in standard deviations which makes the comparison process easier so and the interpretation of the z-score is quite simple so uh, in case of normal distribution, so when mean, mode, and median are the same, we have the following. So uh, whenever you get as this score that lies between negative 1 and, and 1, that means that this observation falls within 68% of the values. If you get a Z score that is uh, between negative 2 and 2, so okay, maybe between negative 1 and negative 2 or 1 and 2, so that means that this observation falls within um, within uh, the thirteen point fifty nine percent of observations, and if you get a z score for some observation between two and three or negative two and three, that means that this value falls within the values of only two point fourteen percent out of all the observations, and it might also happen that you get a z-score between 3 and 4 or negative 3 and 4 that means that this observation is uh, that this observation falls within only one uh, 0.13 percent of all observations